Okay, welcome back to Final Thoughts for Bora Bora, at which point we stop to say hi, everybody. Uh, how's your weekend been? Uh, mine's been pretty good. I've uh, been playing a really fun game called Bora Bora that just showed up a few days ago. Jen and I have been enjoying it immensely so far because it is news alert, news flash. It's wonderful. Um, you know, I, I don't know. There's, I really, really enjoy it a lot. a lot. Much like all Feld games, it's very, very hard to rank this against the other ones. I mean, actually, I just got done doing a series of pretty much all of Steppenfeld's games, minus a couple that I don't have. Um, so, is this better than Castles of Burgundy? Is it better for two-player than Macau? I don't know. It's really, really good. Um, we really like it a lot. You know, it does all the stuff that a Steffenfeld game does so well. It really gives you a lot to think about. It gives you a lot of really strong, long-term, strategic goals to try to hit because of those in-game bonuses you can get for, you know, successfully doing various things. It gives you a lot of very tough tactical choices to make in the short term because you always have those goals. There's this immense pressure to complete these goals. And it's interesting, you know, like, unlike, um, you're the dragon, where there's a huge amount of pressure every turn to um, hit your goals because otherwise terrible calamitous things happen. Here, there's tremendous pressure to hit them because if you don't, you don't score a lot of points. So it's kind of like, it's a flip. It's a positive thing, but it's still negative because if your opponent scores six every turn and you don't, well, you better be doing something um, to make up for the fact that you weren't scoring those six tile bonuses as well as the bonus six you get at the end of the game for having done every single goal you had along the way. So like I said, really great mix of long-term strategy and short-term tactics that's uh, mixed up with the dice rolls. And once again, Steffenfeld shows he does dice better than anybody because he understands there needs to be a really good reason um, to roll high numbers and an equally good valid use for low numbers. So well done. Um, again, well, I don't know why more designers can't get that through their thick skull. Um, now, how do we like it compared to the others? Um, I'm not going to say it's um, my favorite. And interestingly, not because it's bad, I mean the mechanics are great, we're definitely going to have um, years of fun playing this game. But this game, um, unlike say uh, Trojan or Burgundy or Macau or Luna, um, in each one of those games, the, I mean, you know, the thing that makes every one of these games unique is the way you do your action selection. Whether it's a worker placement thing with dice, or whether it's a rondelle thing, or a Moncala thing, or whatever. There are, there are always some unique way that you actually choose your actions every turn. And in the majority of Feld's games, um, your opponents can't stop you from doing the action you want to do. There's a race for the stuff that's on the board. They can grab what you wanted before you get a chance to get it. But you can still do the core actions you want to do. In this game, and also in Year of the Dragon, what your opponents do can completely stop you from doing the core action you want to do. So there's like a double race, not only to get what you want off the board, but also just to get to write the do what you wanted to do. And that makes this game a little bit more harsh, a little bit more confrontational, a little bit, if anything, you, you know, meaner. Um, or I, I guess most people would call it more interactive, but we call it meaner. And you know that I mean that doesn't bring it down because the game gives you plenty of ways to mitigate that. You know with the different gods that let you get in where you need to go and all that stuff. But um, it, it means I think at the end of the day I, I'd still you know after the newness wears off I think I'd still enjoy Triogen or Luna a little bit more just because it's a little bit less interactive and um, you know. I, I, in, in our house, interactive, or you know, multiplayer solitaire is not a bad thing. It's more about just enjoying the ride, having a good time, me and Jen playing the game together. But enough about that. Um, you know, what else is there to talk about? I mean, you've seen how the game plays. You know, there's going to be a lot of people um, saying, ah, Feld, he doesn't know, you know, he wouldn't be able to hit um, the broadside of a barn with the app. Theme! There's no theme! And again, I just think that's ridiculous because if you actually just apply a modicum of imagination, everything makes thematic sense here. Um, you know, and I really do feel like I'm making choices that are, um, you know, building stuff up. I mean, you know, the the, the setup of, um, you know, how, you know, building more villages out on the board m clears up the room so you can hire more of the people because these spaces represent the spaces around the board. Whereas, alternatively, if you can't expand out on the board, um, you can, you know, basically crowd your people more and more into the villages you've got. I just think that's so clever and so elegant and thematically spot on. It just makes sense. And, you know, and then later on, you can start, um, you know, putting these out here on the board to indicate that, oh, well, your people are getting spread out. But people would say, ah, oh, but, but it makes no 
no sense. I mean, why are you hiring just men and women? That makes no thematic sense. Of course it makes thematic sense. These tiles don't just represent a, a single woman. This is not a woman who happens to spend all her time praying and occasionally once upon a time gives you. What, um, what these mean is, you know, when I put this dude here, what I was doing is I was saying, yeah, you know what? This village over here, uh, my, my village, uh, my master, my clan that's spreading, uh, you know, uh, Polynesian um, people, they're spreading all across the island. This village um, specializes in, in finding conch shells. That's what this village specializes in doing. And this guy is kind of like the elder of that village. And one time, you know, um, I, can in, I can exert my influence on him to kind of get off his lazy butt and activate him so that he can do, because he's an elder who does a lot of tattoos. And so I can, you know, I can exert my influence. To me, that makes perfect thematic sense. Um, you know, every turn that village generates conch shells for me. And if I want to exert my influence on the, the leader of that village, um, you know, I get his special thing, you know, and in some villages, well, uh, the, the lady leader of this village, I'll get even more conch shells than normal. That makes perfect sense. Um, I also kind of like the fact that, you know, when, men and women in this game are treated equally. They're equally valuable, um, you know, as a societal statement. I mean, it's just kind of lovely. So I, I say humbug to those who uh, cry no theme foul in this game. I mean, heck, I, I guess... If you want to say, oh, the tiles, they make no sense. They're just random arbitrary things that you're doing for no reason. Yes, that's true. Um, what the designers, uh, you know, the publisher could have done is they could have put text. They could have made these twice as big and put a little bit of text that said, oh, the reason you want to get um, three villages um, into the mountains is because your, um, your, your, your favorite nephew um, says he uh, you know, wants to return to the glorious uh, past of where your family lived in the mountains. There, suddenly you have a thematic reason for wanting to put three villages in the mountains. Or this one, um, you know, why um, you know, upgrade three ladies to do their special thing? Oh, because it'd be so easy to write a little story for this. So yes, they didn't put in thematic story reasons for these. Just make up your own. They all make perfect sense. There is a perfectly valid thematic reason that you would want more male-dominated... Um, um, tribes because of you know societal pressures you're under. So yeah, there's theme here aplenty. Again, if you're willing to use a little bit of imagination. I mean, you, you, it, you know, games don't all have to be Arkham Horror just telling you every little bit with, um, that prevents you from feeling like you're enmeshed and immersed in the world. But I'm sorry, that is a silly rant. I don't know why I went off on that. Obviously, it's uh, directed at the, uh, the people of the world who think, well, uh, anyway, Long story short, yes, I think it's thematically solid, tight, fun, felled game. Jen and I enjoy it a lot. We'll be looking forward to it. In fact, actually, we're even going to try to. Um, there's a guy on Board Game Geek who is uh, who has access to like little, um, little. I don't know if they're real or acrylic shells, so we can replace these things. Because Jen, when she looks at them every time, she says, well, "I'm going to say it looks like a tadpole," but that's not what she really says. She says it looks like something else, um, kind of similar to a tadpole. But I know kids watch my show, so I'll just say they look like tadpoles. Anyway. Um, that's Bora Bora. I think that wraps it up. Uh, I'll stop um, ranting now since I'm down to less than 20% of battery life. And this has been another exciting episode of Rotto Runs Through. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for um, joining me today. I hope to see you again in the near future. Bye-bye.